And here's what I want to do. While I'm bringing people in manually, let me just first set the tone for the show and get things going. All right, you guys. So Mitch Jackson, my wife and I have a small boutique, Southern California law firm here in Southern California, 34 years. We moved everything online about 10 years ago. All right. And so right now, everyone's working from home. The team's working from home. We're dealing with client concerns, client questions. That's where our focus is. But what I'm noticing is there's a unique dynamic. Um, the dynamic has to do with helping the clients with being a leader and being competent while at the same time dealing with family dynamics. We have uh, my why. My why is my family. My daughter is a first year lawyer up in Century City. She's now working from home. Our son is a second year student at USC. He's now working from home and completing his classes online probably for the rest of the year. And so my wife and I, Lisa, we met in law school. Those are my whys. Let me just cut to the chase and then I'm gonna ask all of you, I'm not gonna to spend too much time on me, but I want you guys to know for me, the dynamics been balancing, being a professional, being a leader, being that person that people can count on to help fix their problems while at the same time, being a good thoughtful husband, being a father who's walking his talk and setting a good example and trying to balance all of this, balancing the amount of love and care with wanting my kids to be independent thought leaders and independent thinkers and do things for their own on their own. I know a lot of you that are dads, we know we can get our kids, we can help our kids fix their problems with one snap of our fingers. We can, we can, we can share what works, but we want them to figure things out for themselves. So there's an interesting dynamic right now. For me, my why is my family. Uh, my motivation is to move forward with the practice and move forward and watching them develop. But it's challenging, right, being around the house here in California, which is where we're located, you guys. There's an order where we're supposed to stay inside, right? We're not supposed to go outside. And, and, and if we do, practice safe social distancing. I saw Brian Kramer earlier today and yesterday on a walk. And Brian, you said something that was interesting. And by the way, you guys, when you hop in, your mics might be muted. And I'm going to bring everybody else in and go over to Facebook. But Brian, you shared an email today and you said something today that resonated with you and I. And that is, I'm watching the community, at least my community and your community, interact just like we did shortly after 9-11. Right? There's that, there's that local, that national, and in this case, this global bonding that's taking place. If you have a second, Brian, and I noticed you did unmute your mic Share a little bit, if you don't mind, what you mean by that, and what's your why? What's your motivation each day? I'd love to know. I'm going to bring other people in while you have the mic, my friend. Thanks, Mitch. I appreciate you doing this, and this is so awesome of you to just uh, create this experience for everybody, just to be on here and and uh, just to feel the community here is is uh, is brilliant. Um, we need to be doing more of this, um, having people up on on. Uh, you know these little uh, these little ad hoc interactive parties. I I love uh, seeing all your friends here and meeting new ones, uh, and and some existing ones. Um, I yeah I, I went for a walk this morning, and it was different than a walk I take almost every day. Uh, three weeks ago, I remember taking a walk though, and or two to three weeks ago, and I was I was it was interesting because nobody looked up. Nobody looked at, at me when I passed them. That was before. That, this is a, this is years ago, or actually it was only a couple of weeks ago, but it feels like years ago, uh, when nobody was um, smiling at each other or, or high fiving each other, or, you know, virtually saying hi, just even across the street, it was just non-existent. So um, this morning, I, Courtney and I were, were were walking, and we just realized that every single person actually waved at each other or smiled or said something. I remember two little kids uh, walking in there talking about um, something and really, really in, in this like really deep uh, conversation. And then they just stopped, turned towards us and, and, and they yelled, hey, how are you doing? And, and they were even like preteens getting into this uh, new, new world that we're in. So I really um, think that this is a little bit different than um, 9-11, not to take oh. away from the impact of 9-11. Um, that's not Huge. what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but this is different in, in the way that it impacts us all, each individually. I mean, there isn't anybody, I don't think, on earth that isn't impacted in some way by this. And that's the difference. Um, before we had empathy for New York and for families, and now we have empathy for each other because we're all going through this together. 
and that that I think is is a major difference. And I really do hope, to your point, when you left a comment on my post earlier, um, you know that this is this we're we're forever changed in in the way that we see each other when we go to the store, when we go to you know a movie theater, and it's a packed house. The next time we're able to go to a movie theater and we see people sitting around us, I'm gonna I'm not taking it for granted that I'm sitting amongst people and we're getting to enjoy this movie together. And so that's um, that's that to to answer your question on my why. Um, you know, it's changed throughout the years. Um, if you ask me about every two years, my why changes to something something new because of what what's prior what's the big priority what's prioritized in my life right now um you know as you mentioned um mitch my my family definitely is a higher priority for me they're definitely uh up there in in terms of my why but my bigger why is um is how humans can um can stay in touch how we can all remain in relationship the number one thing that every single human on earth has in common is the desire to be in connection. Um, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you want. Um, connection is is the number one reason for humans to be humans. Um, and and with the with that comes simplicity, empathy, imperfection, and all these great, wonderful things that make us human. But that's the one desire that we all have. And now that we aren't able to actually be in connection with each other, it definitely challenges us on a different level. So anyway, that's my current why. That's where I, I live. And I appreciate you having us all here. And thank you for asking that question. Well, look, it's a natural evolution of, of our little brief conversation earlier this morning. And I think the last time we experienced this as a global community was like 100 years ago. Right? And and yeah. And 100, my, 104 years it was 104 years. And my Sunday afternoon is looking a lot like my Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday afternoon. And that's why I, why I just set this for today. I figured I'm probably not alone. I'm probably experiencing the same thing that a lot of other people are. Right. And just from the looks of things, I think I was spot on with that. Um, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Finch. Share, share what you're doing, you know, what's your why, how's your family doing? And, and Brian, I hopefully you don't have to bold. I want to come back and, and I love your, uh, your, your, your thoughts on what's going on. But Johnny, real quick, and I'd like everyone, think about what's your why, you know, what's your, what's your reason for rolling out of bed, Johnny? I think I already know your answer, but introduce yourself. Let everyone know, you know, who you are and where you're from and what your why is, if you don't mind. Let me unmute you. You're good. Go, Johnny. Hey, guys. Johnny Finch, North Carolina criminal defense attorney. Um, of course, I will be going after the two greatest dads in the United States. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> You want to talk to the here, kids, Johnny? Because I don't I, know if I they're going to agree wanna, with you. I just want to steal Brian's answer. I want to steal your answer. Um, I think more than anything else, it's just this time. Um, more to, it just gives me the opportunity to kind of reflect on that. And I'm glad that Brian said that it changes because it, it, it definitely does. I mean, whatever whatever I was thinking about doing yesterday, I think it was something similar to effectuating change on a bigger level than I, what I've been doing. I, I really enjoy helping people on an individual family basis. Um, but through connecting, when we understand that we can take that same energy, like the literal same energy and kind of fetchuate on a on a bigger level, especially since with everything that's going on now, social justice is pretty good. So pretty just good. moving pretty towards good. a space where maybe we can um, do things a little bit more financially effective in the criminal justice realm, but at the same time, being able to connect with you guys and uh, create mm. a healthy uh, mental space for me. So when I do go home, my wife is not chasing me with a baseball bat. It's <laughs> really big on, my, on my list because being in the house this last couple of days, <laughs> I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, different she's dynamics, giving, isn't it? She's been giving it to me. I didn't realize how messy I was. She like follows me from room to room, literally telling me what I'm not cleaning up, and I. She just cleans faster than I do. It, I'm gonna get it, but she, yeah. So yeah, just just be so in a good space. So Johnny, criminal defense attorney, your 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 you, the the representation you provide is keeping. You know, it, it's affecting people's lives, you know, as far as keeping keeping wrongfully accused people out of jail, uh, making sure the constitutional rights are protected. Yet you're talking about the dynamics at home right now. I mean, it's a big deal for all of us. Right. How do we how do we interact? How do we engage? How do we improve our people skills? Uh, Mo, love what you're doing. You know, Mo's one of the one of the top dads out there. Also great Alabama 
a lawyer, but but involved with his family, involved with his son. His wife's a school teacher. And Mo, I have a feeling everyone's probably home uh, working on their jump shots, working on their crossovers, uh, taking care of taking care of your dog. And uh, how are you adjusting and dealing with all the dynamics? How are you combining your your why, which I've watched you speak about, uh, your motivation, and balancing all that with the practice of law? Yeah, um, it, it's very tough, and and trying to figure this out, it, it's new for all of us. And you know what's so scary is is that you know as somebody who's 42, fixing to be 43. Um, you know, I'm trying to figure it out and trying to get my hands around it and then trying to trying to get your nine year old son to figure out what's going on if he's got questions and, and, and wondering what's going on. And, you know, why aren't we, this trip we've been planning for a year now that we're not going to go on this trip that we've been talking about doing for a whole year next week for spring break. And it's like, are we going to ever get to go on our big trip? You know, that's very minor, but but trying to wrap your hands around that. Why is, is he going to get to go play baseball anymore? You know, is he going to get to do all these things? And now, you know, we were still trying to get out to the park and do some of this. Now they've closed all the parks and doing all that. So, you know, we're out in the driveway doing all that. And um, so, you know, work-wise, work is good. We're very fortunate. We're getting a lot of business, and there's a lot of things still that we've got in the mix. From I think there's a lot of, you know, we're getting a lot of phone calls from clients now who are at home that are getting more time to think about their cases. Uh, so that's good. We're interacting with more clients probably. and uh, But we're getting some of the things that we're doing uh, – digitally online wise are, are getting some business here in the last week because I think there are more people home from estate planning stuff that my firm does to some other things that we're, we're kind of got our line in the water for and do but but everything's good we're just trying to stay busy and, and trying to keep somewhat of routine and you know for me um, something that I shared out this morning you know for me health is, is it's always been a struggle and do um, and so when you can't get to the gym and you can't do those things, it's tough. So, you know, I, I'm fortunate I've got a Peloton bike and, I, and I'm just kind of diving back in head first into that and trying to ask people to help hold me accountable. And I'll try to help other people accountable and doing things like this and try to help other business leaders and thought leaders. I, this is the third or fourth that one of these that I've done in the last week. And it's great because it's great to see a global community come together to try to not only figure out this pandemic, but try to kind of help us all mentally stay focused with, with our jobs and with our families and try to get through this. And we will, if we'll just stay focused. I loved your post this morning about exercise and health. It's funny how we all have different perceptions. Your perception of, of what you're experiencing is different than what I'm watching. You know, you're always working out. Mo's an ex uh, high school and college football lineman. You guys always working out, always, always coaching his kid and he's at his kids games. And my perception of what you're doing most completely different than what your post shared today. So I just want you to know you're my motivation. Sometimes I don't want to work out. And then I see you posting. You're already up at the gym and back before I've even gotten out of bed. I'm like, all right, I need to get my, my backside out the door and get a workout. I know Brian dropped, Brian Kramer dropped, uh, what, 40, 40, 50 pounds, Brian, which, which by the way, I, Never even noticed that from day one. So congratulations. How do you guys, how do you guys incorporate or what value do you place on, on exercise, on activity with, with remaining mentally uh, healthy? I mean, that's a big deal, right? Especially right now. Yeah. The, well, the, um, I, so just to be honest, I lost 60 pounds and then I gained uh, about seven back. So I'm working on, I'm working on that, but, um, uh, wow. you know, at a, at a time like this, um, wow. you know, our, our inclination is to head to the refrigerator cause there's so much stress in the air and, um, and you know, this is not a good time to uh, start a bad habit. Um, this is not a good time to, uh, start drinking more alcohol. This is not a good time to, uh, you know, bury your stress into wherever you put your, your, whatever you're putting into your body and um you know for whoever needed to, to hear that i just i send that message out out to them um the biggest thing right now and, and i'll tell you i didn't lose any of that weight by exercising and i'm a person who exercises my entire life i was a wrestler and tennis player and ride, ride, rode bikes and, and exercise was not the way i lost my weight it was through food um a hundred percent so anybody out there that thinks you can't lose weight just by being home um, I was a, I was home. I worked from home um, uh, for the last, I don't know, three years I've been working from home. And so uh, that's not an excuse not to lose weight. In fact, now is the best time to lose weight because you are home and you don't have any plans to go eat at a restaurant. You don't have any plans to go see people at their house and you don't have anybody telling you what you can and can't 
eat, you get to choose that. So I just want to put that out there. Great point. Let me be real honest with everyone. Uh, I've been on a health kick too, Brian, and uh, I made a big batch of chocolate chip cookies yesterday, right? Sitting around Saturday, I just thought the whole family would like it. And uh, I'm the one that seems to be eating them all. So we can all every once in a while make a mistake, right? And not be too hard on ourselves. Enjoy that mistake, but then get back on the bike right? Redirect and start doing what we know we're supposed to be doing. Hey, I would love to hear from, uh, from Jennifer and then maybe uh, Bernard, uh, Julie, Neil, if you guys want to jump in in that order and share, you know, your why. Jennifer, I think I know what your why is. Great show, by the way, last couple of weeks on Agora Pulse. Always a great show, but especially the last two weeks ago and then last week. But Jennifer, what's, what's keeping you going each day? How are you keeping that smile on your face? And introduce um, yourself to everybody. So I am Jennifer Watson. I'm the social media manager at Agora Pulse. Um, prior to that, I was the social media specialist at the Weather Channel. By trade, I'm a meteorologist. That's what my uh, undergraduate and master's degree is in. Um, but through that process, I also became kind of very educated in social media management as well. And um, yes, a week and a half ago, we had an amazing guest. He's a trial lawyer from California. And All right, he that's just, not like, why I was bringing this up. But, <laughs> you, so but you have a great insane. Friday show. Right? <laughs> and how do you keep that smile on your face? What, what keeps you motivated right now? I don't know. I always, I look at life as like, you never know what tomorrow can bring. And I always try to live in the moment, obviously during, you know, there's different points in the day where you, you can, or sometimes you get stuck, but I just, I've always been a positive thinker um, just because, you know, you get this one life, this one opportunity and you can worry your life away, but that, I mean, then what is your good life going to be like when you're 80 years old and you look back on it? And I just think there's so much opportunity I, I love people. I love connecting with people. And what we talked about this last episode, this past Friday, was the fact that this isn't just a natural disaster or some kind of big event occurring to one region, one country, one city. This is a global you know, event that we're all going through together. Everyone in the world is impacted directly or indirectly somehow. Know somebody that lost a job, is hurting really bad. And we're all on a level playing field right now. That's the crazy thing. We're all on a level playing field. And those that rise from this will soar. And mm -hmm. along with that, you'll find like the real true thought leaders will also succeed out of this as well. But what I love about what's going on right now is the fact that we are all like, it's, I don't know, strangers are your friends. Everyone is like, I get it. It's like a nod, a smile. Um, even when I was, my last flight I took was um, from Oklahoma City two weeks ago. And this lady had wipes and like in our entire row gave us all a wipe to wipe it down. She's like, just to be safe, guys. Oh, I love that. And it's, you know, everyone's just extra friendly. And I hate that during the, a time like this, like I, I, the one thing I love about unfortunate times like this is everyone comes together. I just wish it happened organically, not during, you know, natural disasters or other things like that. Um, but I, I think my biggest why is, you know, you only live once and I'm like, I crave human connection. You know, that's just what it is. I mean, at, us as humans, we crave that, you know, we, we want to feel included and, um, a part of something and a community, you know, we all crave that. And I think that's our biggest opportunity right now is to create communities to help support people because everyone needs different support, whether it's, you know, financially, mentally, health wise. And, um, and a really quick thing about the whole working out thing. Um, I have, a, I have a protein S deficiency, so I'm prone to blood clots. And actually, um, my twin sister had a blood clot and was only given a 20% chance to live about 10 years ago, which like scared wow. me, uh, was very crazy. So one thing I try to do at the top of every hour is take five minutes and go outside for a quick walk, or I run up and down the stairs in my apartment complex. Um, and people are like, whoa, what's she doing? But, um, but I get the blood flowing. And when I was at the Weather Channel, it was a stair walker kind of group where at the top of every hour, we'd walk up eight flights of stairs and then come back down. But it got your blood pumping. But get moving, get outside, um, get fresh air. I think that's the best thing right now. And unfortunately, 
a lot of people aren't allowed to even leave their house, but open the windows, look outside, yeah. you know, stay away from your computer and phone, you know, for 10 minutes and do that. But I think the biggest thing is coming together, like what you're doing right now, Mitch, is you're, you're creating this community. And I don't know, um, probably the majority of the people in here and which is really cool. I, you know, we get to talk to people and meet people we've never met before. And, all kind of go through this and talk through this together. And so, well, let me introduce you to somebody right now who okay. I have not met personally, but Steve Garfield, I'm talking about you. And <laughs> uh, real quick, you guys, this is really the first time Steve and I have met. I feel like I know Steve, but I bought Steve's book. It was, it's called uh, Get Seen and Steve, correct me, but it came out in what, 2007, 2000, what? 2015. Well, originally your book came out now, your book came oh. out, Wait. your book, Get Seen, when did it come out originally? 2010, maybe? There you go. Yeah. And so I bought this I book. <laughs> I, let me help you out. You wrote the book, but let me help you out. So, so I, I <laughs> bought Steve's book, saw it at the bookstore, bought it, and it resonated with me. Wow. Video and live video. This is something that I can see evolving quickly, especially with this thing called the internet. Here he is right now, 10 years later on my Zoom. So Steve, it's been fun just communicating with you on Facebook over the years. But uh, wow, what are you guys, what are you guys doing now? What do you, Jennifer, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I wanted you to meet Steve, Steve, Jennifer, Steve, the community, the community, Steve Garfield. Um, Steve, it's nice to meet you. It's such a huge pleasure to meet you, by the way. Yeah, you guys take over. I mean, I'm, I just wanted to get this thing going, but. Uh, well, so I'm a huge well, advocate of live video. I, cause it's the one thing that you can do to connect with people around the world. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's no other way to do that. And it's just, you press that button and who knows who could tune in. So yeah. I think it's, it's fascinating. And what made you write about it um, like 10 years ago? So um, I was one of the first people to start blogging. Um, I did it by hand when I was working as a producer in a Boston um, morning radio show. And what would happen was guests would come in every day and I would want to share with our listeners what they were promoting. So I made a web page and I, I put their name and I made a link to information about their book. And then the next day, someone new would come in. So I would go into the HTML code, which I had taught myself how to do, copy that first part, paste it underneath, and then change and put the new name in the new book or record that they were promoting and put that up. And then in 2000, um, Blogger came out, which totally changed everything. I didn't have to do anything by hand anymore. And I could just use Blogger to, to do this, and every, everybody started blogging. <laughs> so then in, um, well, so I was involved in uh, public access cable, teaching myself everything about video, how to shoot, how to edit. So I, that was one of my sidelines, something I was interested in. And then around 2004, um, 2005, um, Final Cut Pro came out on a Mac, which allowed people, regular people to edit video. So I learned that. And then on January 1st, 2005, I said, well, blogging made it really easy for people to put words on the web. Why doesn't anybody put video on a blog? <laughs> so I figured out how to, I made up a new blog. <laughs> it was new Year's Day of 2005. And I called it Steve Garfield's video blog. And I made a video and I said, 2005, the year of video blogging. And I put the video on the blog. And then from there, as I learned more and more about how to put video on the web, I would share everything I learned on my blog. Oh, that's awesome. Um, shortly after that, someone, people found me because they were searching for how to do this stuff. And then we started a Yahoo group. And so then people from all over the world joined in and we all shared with each other how to, how to do this stuff. And we were all 
filming videos and, and putting them up online. And the, the magical thing that happened was by watching their videos, we got to know them and we, we felt like we, we knew each other. And it was a really weird feeling, unlike today, everybody's doing it. Back then it was very unique. And um, we just, you know, all got to know each other by sharing videos. And then we met, we, we had a, one person from Europe was flying into New York and another person who lived in New York wanted to meet that person. And then everybody on the group got excited and they all said, well, I'll fly to New York. And we organized this video blogging conference. We just did it ourselves. And so we all got to meet each other. And the first time I met one of these other video bloggers in person, you know, I, I met him and I was like, I, I already know you, this is weird. <laughs> It was like a really, it was just an unbelievable thing. And we really felt, you know, the power of video in, in getting to know other people. So, you know, I traveled around the, the country um, and spoke about this. And then I wrote a book for Wiley called Get Seen, which, which Mitch says he bought. And thank you for, oh, yeah. for that. Absolutely. Um, and this, then we had video conferences like this with um, college-based software that wasn't even public but this reminds me of that and this is this is the same kind of thing that we we experienced when we started i'm wondering jim if you if uh steve if your story um which goes like this you know written blogs to hey maybe this video thing now i gotta learn how to do video how do you do video how do you upload it to the internet uh yeah. that story i wonder with what's happening in today's world especially over the last two weeks, how many of us have the opportunity to create a new story for ourselves, to take either family members or experiences or work with our clients to slowly create and pivot and create these new stories. Um, you know, this oh, is, it, this, it, 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 yeah, go ahead. that's exactly, it's like, it feels like deja vu all over again. Okay. It, everybody who's in their house and they're trying to figure out how to put video online, <laughs> and the camera is angle is not right and the audio isn't good and and these are all the people from the morning tv shows who are stuck in their houses and they've had people do it for them all this time and and like every time they come on i'm saying to my wife carol ah oh, this guy needs a microphone oh this person needs lighting oh that guy needs to raise his camera up to eye level it's everything we did you know we over the past 10 years and learned it's 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 so funny so i actually reach out to these people because now you know you can con connect with them and i i message them on twitter or facebook wherever i connect and i give them you know a little message i'm like hey you know you you should get a better microphone and they message me back and they're like yep cnn is sending me one and you know i said i'll help you if you need anything and it's really uh cool to connect with them like that i love it i'm glad you i'm glad you're here steve and i'm glad our paths have crossed at least digitally in life and you know, Steve just said something that I think he'll confirm and I'll share this live. There's something about, I think Steve, you pro, Steve knows me. He knows what I post on Facebook, both personally, professionally, and politically. Uh, and it's interesting. I feel like I know you. I think you probably feel like you know me and it's all from this experience. And if we feel that way, and I'm in California and Steve's on the East Coast, imagine what our clients would feel like right now if we connected with them using this type of technology. One of the things I've learned, and Harlan, maybe you can jump in. Harlan Schillinger's here, and he is one of the uh, original legal marketing experts on the planet. But Harlan, what I noticed over the last couple of weeks is that a lot of lawyers aren't familiar with maybe what a lot of us here take for granted, video and live video, how easy this is, this is to do, and how easy it is for us to connect with our clients uh, and with other people from around the world to, to keep our communities going forward, right? This yeah, is it's, pretty, just... it's actually pretty easy. And, you know, through diverse times, you know, things uh, happen. And I think that a lot of good things are going to happen from, you know, from this crisis, hmm. uh, you know, where we're at. Uh, you know, first of all, Mitch, uh, thanks for putting this together. I, sorry I popped in late. No, uh, we're good. I was online good. trying to buy toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> we found some actually, crazy, and, and, crazy. Uh, and I've learned so much video 
uh, from you. Uh, my original oh, uh, you. guy was Jerry Oginski, and he's still a dear, dear friend. Yeah. And then Mitch, you just took it to a whole nother level. I read Steve's book, Harlan. Seriously, that's that's what got that's literally what got me started. But Harlan, talk to us a little bit about about uh, your why and uh, what keeps you going each day. I, I think I know the answer, but I want to hear what you have to say. Well, passion is 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 my why, and uh, I love this business. I've been in it since uh, uh, 1977. You know, when, wow. when we produced our first commercials in 1978 and so on, and uh, have an advertising background. So. Um, I hate to say uh, the grandfather because it kind of puts more gray hairs on me. <laughs> you know, as you know, we've been around for a very, very long time. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, there you go. Um, and so, uh, you know, getting back to this, this video content, you know, er, uh, good things always emerge from, you know, difficult situations. But Mitch, you're absolutely right. Uh, the advice that I've been giving my clients, and I have, a, a, you know, a handful of private clients, is that grab your phone say something in it, say something intelligent. It doesn't have to be slick. It doesn't have to be great. I will remind people about your post about the backgrounds and all the little things that you, you know, that you teach us, but this is the time and you will be defined by how you react and treat your clients right now. Um, look, that's a good point. there's very few people on the planet that's booked more television time than I have in, in legal advertising. But I will tell you, and you know this, that the best case that comes into your office is through referral. Wow. And people are getting into accidents. There's a lot of chatter. And it's time for you to, time for lawyers, I believe, to, to rise up. And uh, you're not taking calls, so give calls. Put calls out. Pick up the phone. Reach every single client. Check in with them once a week. This is a time for uh, vigilance. And most importantly, compassion. You know, lawyers uh, in the personal injury field or whatever business that you're in, you know, you took an oath of office to, uh, uh, to get your license, the first legal deal you ever made. And I would encourage you simply to go, you know, to Google and, and, and read what you uh, signed when you became a lawyer. Now, over the years, Mitch, I've talked to thousands of lawyers and I've never met one lawyer that read it after they signed it. But this is a good time for you to review that. Because what it says is, I will do this for my client. I will, I will do this, 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 and that. And what I'm saying is reach out to your clients. It will come back to you. You know, we call it database marketing in the day of, you know, in a normal activity. Uh, it's service. Uh, it's so important. It's the most important thing I can I can honestly contribute to this, you know, to this. Appreciate that. The, this group and anybody else. It's caring, right, Harlan? It's probably reaching out right now and just showing that you care. I don't think this is. I personally don't think this is the time to market. I think this is the time to show that you care, that you have empathy, that you uh, appreciate and are there for your clients, your contacts, your audience. I will say for the lawyers out there. And Steve, I know you're on mute. You don't really need to respond. But Steve's friends with um, Jimmy Fallon. And I do think that uh, the lawyers and professionals who are using video, uh, we need to entertain a little bit more. And when I say entertain, I'm not talking about juggling and singing a song and jumping up and down. What I'm talking about is keeping things interesting, right? It's like every night Jimmy comes out and just kills it with his monologue. And lawyers can do the same thing. They can be interesting and be unique and create memorable content, right? And I mean, we can look to the professionals and see how do they do that, embrace what works uh, for them with what works with our personality and, and be different. And in other words, put on show, you know, put on a live video like this that allows people to come in if you have time and, and share your thoughts. Well, and well, well, Mitch, there's, there's something that you and I have talked about you know, for a long time, you harp on it. It's humanizing yourself. Humanizing yourself. And, uh, and, yeah. and by the way, you know, it's good to meet you, Steve. Uh, you, I came in on your comments and it was, it was really cool. And what's really interesting is you watch what Fallon is doing. You watch what the Today Show and Al Roker are doing. They're getting better every day. They're, they're, you know, some people are helping them. I guess, you know, you're one of them. And they are getting better every day because they're having to adapt. Mitch, back to you. You mm. you have said this many many times on your you know on your runs in the morning, and uh, I've become a tremendous fan of you because I'm learning from you. You're mm, telling us you. to humanize ourselves right now, 
and and they couldn't be a better time. You know, you've got people that are on, uh, on this webcast that that do it all the time. You know, Morris, I've learned so much from your you know your initiatives on on doing your uh, you know your your call-ins and such. You know, Neil, uh, you you're a wonderful man. Now, why shouldn't we just get on the phone? and talk to our clients or say something. It's a tremendous time. You know, you say we shouldn't be marketing. Um, I, well, I disagree with that. I, I'm not I, saying I we should, yeah, I'm not saying we shouldn't be. We need to be aware of what we're communicating, the message we're communicating. Right. Well, there's a time and a, first of all, I think the Bible says this, or somebody said, there's a time and a place for everything. I think it was my mother. <laughs> uh, and, 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 you know, this is the time for us to humanize ourselves. Mm and to give more than we take and to share our knowledge and to lift people up. Um, I'm getting ready to do another little blog, excuse me, a little, uh, you know, put out, uh, you know, random acts of kindness, I think are very appropriate. Uh, and, and you're yes, absolutely right. You know, I good. call it marketing, you know, okay, we can call it whatever we want. I, it's also, you know, just being, you know, stand up people. Uh, but you're, you know, the more you put out right now, this is, this is what, think about how many people aren't going to do anything or they don't want to do something or they're afraid to do something. They don't know what to do. It's, it's, uh, we're all gotta, this together. We've got to be leaders. We're all in this together, right? I think we, we share a lot of similar um, experiences, worries, uh, uh, you know, things that make us smile. I will tell you, Harlan, for putting yourself out there and being human. And I don't know if Bernard can talk right now. It looks like he's a passenger and we, we want to be careful with that. But he's the one we've been talking about the last two days around the house, just so you know. And the reason, Bernard, we've been talking about you the last couple of days around the house is here's a lawyer uh, dancing with his daughter from the sorority house on TikTok. Dude, you, you, you not only have great dance moves, but I love that you're putting yourself out there and showing your human side on TikTok. That is fantastic. Well, so good for you. Well, thank you. But you know I have a great teacher. One of my wives is right there. And yeah. we're, we're driving back from the University of Georgia. I don't know if you guys can hear me very clearly, yes. but I'm just, I'm a passenger. We're headed east back home, almost home. But it, it really has been a great time to reconnect with her. Not that we're ever really apart that much. We, we communicate every day, but she's moved back into the house and will be home for the next foreseeable future. But we just thought that it might bring a little levity, a little smile to the face of people who know us, or even those who don't. But as I talked this morning on my On the Trail, I think that civility and levity right now are so very important mm. for everyone. And when we get through this, and we're going to get through this in the upcoming weeks or months, do you want to look back at the way you've behaved and be upset with yourself for not being civil to others? And one of the things that Brian said a few minutes ago and Jennifer and some others is how much more people are connecting. Uh, the, for those of you who know me, I go on the trail, I walk in the woods as often as I can to get exercise, to clear my head, and usually I don't see another person, or I might see one or two, I'm seeing 10 or 20, and while yes, it is a little, I don't want to use the word annoying, <laughs> but everyone is saying hello to the other, and most of us don't know each other, but it's that kind of civility I think that is so important right now that people need to understand why it's so important. And as, as lawyers, I think we're leaders in our respective communities. And I think it's upon us, after you take care of your family and your loved ones and the people in your life, you're taking care of your clients' needs and you're taking care of, of those who may you come in contact with you on social media. And if you can put a little, little levity, a little laughter in that along the way, that's just even more so it helps. Uh, that was so, so that's why we're, we're doing these, these TikTok dances. I love your TikTok dances. And like I said, that's Bernard, we're the ones that we've been thinking of you and your, and your family, and we've been watching you on TikTok. And next time I see you, Lisa asked me to give you some dance, some dance instructions. So we're good to go, <laughs> please. Uh, 
Neil so Goldstein. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. What do you think really will come out of this? You know, I think that what, you know, civility, I hope pours over, you know, when this crisis is over, uh, you know, saying, you know, continuing your civility, continuing yeah. you know, that, 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 that feeling. What do you think that will, uh, will stick? What do you think, what do you think will be? I, th I think in the long run, good things are good things. We're pivoting the right direction. Like Brian mentioned earlier, like what, what uh, Bernard just mentioned, I think we're seeing community coming together, but not just locally, but globally through technology like this, through our online interactions. And I don't think um, this pivot's going to be, you know, easy. It's going to be just challenging from a business standpoint. I can, I don't know about the rest of you, but it's going to be challenging from a personal standpoint with human dynamics under one roof. Okay. Here in California, we're supposed to stay inside. You know, I can't run every day anymore, Harlan, because Lisa's worried about me, uh, un, you know, unknowingly exposing myself to somebody who may have just been in front of me on the path, yeah. um, you know, whatever. So there are some changes that have to be made. But I think, as Steve was mentioning earlier, and we heard, you know, his transition into video uh, and how he developed his business and career, I think that this is the opportunity to do the same, you guys. So my mindset has been to spend some time on the consulting side of what I'm doing. And Neil, you're on the hot seat, so get ready. Spend my time uh, building out some consulting things that we're doing, Harlan, um, making sure we're using live video like this to communicate. Out of a hundred or so clients, we're a smaller firm, you guys, and we, we really are selective about who we represent. Um, out of those hundred clients, about 20 are they like getting bomb bomb video emails from us. So communicating with the client in a way that they want to receive the message and just letting them know that we've got things covered. And I think from this point forward, if you're a professional and you're not embracing the cloud and you're not, you know, basically creating a situation where you're maximizing your ability to be bulletproof, for the next thing that comes along, maybe here in California, it's an earthquake. I don't know. Okay, well, I think whatever. It's going to be the technological boost, you know, that this is exactly this is, this is causing. I mean, there's absolutely no question. I mean, we're all having to, you know, step up and and be a little bit more technical. Uh, you know, I'm probably one of the least technical people on the planet, uh, but yeah. I, you know, I, I surround myself with smarter people, and that's how I've survived. Uh, sure. But I think it's the technological challenge and uh, or know, opportunity. Or opportunity, right? Technological yeah, I think opportunity. that's where the opportunity is. I mean, absolutely. Um, yeah, I agree. And I think, like I said, we're, it's going to—it's—it's it's not going to be easy. There's going to be lots of speed bumps. It's going to be devastating for some people. But when it's all said and done, I think we're going to look back on this year as as a year of opportunity and as a year of moving forward. And I'm really working, you guys. I'm glad the kids are home. Okay, my kid, my daughter's 25, my son's 20. They wouldn't be here right now. And I'm glad they're here so I can make sure they're safe. I'm glad they're here for personal selfish reasons where we get to spend time together 24 seven. And it was shaky that first couple of days because they're both adults in their minds, but I think they're coming around. And I think we're all kind of starting to embrace those chocolate chip cookies I made yesterday. That was the best <laughs> thing I've done in four days. Neil, Neil Goldstein, who's, who's out of New York, I believe, Neil, if I'm not mistaken, you are, you are jumping into and embracing digital, both personally and on behalf of your firm. And it's yes. been fun to have our paths cross over the last, what, two years or so, yes. two and a half, two years ago. Yes. So you heard what Harlan said about embracing digital. How's it going? Is this something that you feel like you're getting the feel for and getting the hang of? Oh, yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's really funny because... Uh, I started embracing the digital world, believe it or not, in 1999 when I got my first URL. And I really didn't know, other than the fact that I was a bit younger and I just wanted to play around on the computer, uh, I really didn't know much about it. And it wasn't until about 2007 that I really jumped into things. Okay. That said, I will tell you that one of the reasons that I joined this group, that I, that I, I, I've been attracted to you uh, is because, you know, we, I think we share, and as a group, we share the same philosophy. And that is you can have all the digital you want. You can have all the blogs you want, 
But at the end of the day, you have to be able to create a bond with somebody. And yes, could you initially do it online? Yes, you're a good looking man, you're a good looking woman, you speak well, yes, that works. But at the end of the day, we have to meet face to face. We have to talk to each other. And that's what creates the bond. And for me, that's, you know, that's always been part of the answer of my why. I come from a very broken background, uh, which I don't, you know, I don't think you want to get into at this point, but it is, it, you know, I had a lot of challenges as a youngster, uh, and I wanted to do something with all those, uh, with the difficulties that I had and the relationships that I was able to create along the way that really helped me move forward. That's why I became a lawyer. That's why I wanted to help people who were in difficult situations. And anybody who knows me, including my clients, know that it's always about authenticity and, and, and being genuine and trustworthy. That just doesn't happen overnight. Um, you know, and I'm sorry to say, the truth is, Mitch, I don't know if this unfortunate situation that we're going through is going to change everybody. It'll change maybe some people. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I've called clients already. It's, this, is, this is not new for me. I've called clients and I, I've asked them how they're doing. I've texted some clients and how you doing? They were surprised to hear from me. Some weren't. Right. And for me, that, that's always been, you know, my, my, my philosophy. And that is have to continuously create those bonds with, with other human beings. And now more than ever, for a lot of people, especially younger people, this is the first time they're going through a crisis like this. Mm. And each of us, even though it's one collective crisis, each of us are going through it individually in our own way. Uh, some people, it's a financial crisis. Some people, it's a health crisis. Some people, it's a crisis that might bring back something in their history. I have two kids who I love I, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get emotional. I don't want to get emotional, but maybe I should. I mean, I love my kids to death. Um, and, you know, they lost their mother a couple of years ago. And now my daughter, who's a senior in high school, she's probably going to have uh, some challenges over the next few months that she's not going to be happy with. Uh, and I'm, I want to be there for them. That's part of the whole why thing for me, you know, and, uh, so I, I, I'm glad that, you know, that I found somebody, Mitch, that, um, mm. that ha shares the same philosophy that I do, being genuine, being real, no BS. Don't try to sell, sell your next PI case on what's happening now. You know, Neil, have you always been, Neil, have you always been that way? Or did you find that as you got a little bit older and you experienced life a little bit more, kind of gravitated it's been, that direction? The truth is, yeah. it, it's been an evolution. So, an evolution. was I always a nice guy? Yeah, I was a lost, I was a lost kid for a long time. But I was always a nice guy, and I was always nice to other people. And the one thing people will always remember about me, I may not be the greatest lawyer, and that's okay. But I'm a good lawyer. You're not going to get screwed with me. You're going to get, you're going to get a good lawyer. But and as long as you know, people walk away and they say, you know, what? I like him. Doesn't have to be the greatest lawyer but I like him and that's fine with me. Trust me, know that I'm real, I'm authentic. And over the years, yes, I, I, I've learned to use it um, in, in, in ways that really can help people. Neil, you know, I appreciate very, that. Very emotional. Jennifer's got to jump off you guys. So Jennifer, thanks for joining us on behalf Hi. of you and Agora Pulse, really appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Mitch. Um, I love Sorry, these, no. so please keep having them. And everyone, I have my email address um, and connect with me on Jennifer Weather Instagram too. We Show me all your info. Um, I'd love to connect offline. So share, share in the comments too, Jennifer, underneath oh. the original Facebook post, if you would, please. That's probably yeah. best. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, all right. thank you. Love tell you Brian, guys. Tell Brian to say hi. I will. All right. Bye. See ya. Hey, Neil, sorry about that. Real quick. Yes, it's perfect. funny how we all bring different life experiences into what we do for a living. Check out Eric Anderson right now. Eric's my man out of uh, the Inland Empire in Southern California, Neil. You know, he is, you know, we have an order. We're supposed to be home. Look at him. Smoking a cigar, having a scotch. Uh, Eric, you guys, for those of you that don't know Eric, he was a professional wrestler for like, you know, well, how many years, Eric? 17 years or something like that? 23. 
23 years. So he, he brought his professional wrestling. He's, a, he's actually one of the brightest guys I've ever met, first of all. Okay. You're, you're far he, too kind. I'm far too accurate. And Eric brought that wrestling mentality into the courtroom here in Southern California. And we have some mutual friends, so that's how we met. But I just wanted to introduce, you know, you guys, if you haven't already met. And Eric, you, you look like you're camping out fairly, uh, fairly well, and you're approaching uh, our order, our California orders, to stay inside uh, the right way. What yeah. motivates you to, to? What motivates you to uh, to keep smiling and keep doing good things? Uh, it's the Sinatra philosophy. You gotta love living, baby, because dying's a pain in the ass. And so. Um, <laughs> You know, what else am I going to do? Uh, you know, I, I'm also a very lucky guy. I have a fantastic wife, a great dog. Um, I'm lucky to have a, not an ostentatious house, but it's a spacious backyard, spacious front courtyard. We've got things set up to where we can work from here. Uh, my associate, and I use the term associate very loosely because he's, he's technically an associate, but he's become a full-fledged partner in, in just about every way that matters. We're, we've hired a new staff member we're going to bring on and we're going to do it completely remotely. We're completely connecting her up remotely for being able to take care of her administrative job. So we've got the technology to do with it. Um, I think that a big part of it is letting the clients know this is a scary time for a lot of you, but we are here for you. We are here for you distantly. We have issued orders to where we will be doing no in-person um, meetings uh, until further notice, but we're going to be doing them all either on Zoom or by that wonderful thing, the telephone. Um, so I think that both the combination of new technology and a little touch of 20th century, early 20th century technology is going to let us do our, uh, our job the best way possible. Uh, and I'm, I, I've got 300 cigars, so I'm, I'm set for a while. I'll be fine. <laughs> I love it. You guys unmute your mics and just jump in. I, we haven't heard from Jeffrey because I've been hogging the mic, so I don't want to, and Julie, uh, I've got, we got here for those of you over in Facebook. And by the way, you guys, we have people watching all over the place. Join us, you know, click the Zoom link and join us in here if you'd like to. You're more than welcome to join us. I've shared the Zoom link with everyone. When I see, I'll bring you in. Hey, Jeffrey, it's good to see you. Good to see you, Mitch. Thanks for having me on this. I'm, I'm grateful that um, I got on Facebook and saw that um, good. and saw the invite. So I'm really happy to come on board. What's getting um, you to roll out of bed in the morning? What's your why? Well, one of them was sitting right next to me for a few minutes. Yeah. My uh, my 15 year old son Ryan. We're all here, you know. We're we're having a perpetual family time. It's one of the local court um, houses closed for 90 days. We just got the order on Friday, so I'm looking at this as sort of a 90 day weekend, but not really because I'm looking to do a lot of things. Um, somebody a lot wiser than me once told me, and this is about 25 years ago, that are that we're kind of like a bicycle wheel. We're analogous to that. And, and the spokes are the different roles we have in our lives. And if we're not performing in one of the roles properly, the wheel doesn't roll, doesn't move right. And so my goal over the next 90 days is to really strengthen up the ro different roles I have. Um, husband, father, lawyer. Um, there are a lot of things I've wanted to um, engross myself in terms of uh, importing technology into what I do. And I've always found that a lot of things that, um, you know, would just come get in the way. You know, I'd have to do something for a client. I'd have to run to court. I don't have that now. So now I could really work on doing a lot of improvement in a lot of areas that I've intended to for a long time. Um, I, I know we were talking earlier about um, about getting into physical shape. I've had a, at the beginning of 2018, I started working out with a trainer and all the gyms around here are closed, but my trainer's gym is still open so I can go and, and, and have a good workout at a gym now. And I've, I've committed to myself that while I'm doing this, the days I don't work out with my trainer, I'm going running and I'm gonna become a good runner over the next 90 to 120 days. That's, that's one personal goal of mine. Um, and I've got a few others, you know, I'm going to start incorporating more video. This is just an amazing thing that's happening right now. I can't believe that we can get on Zoom and, 
and just have this group discussion, um, I'm definitely going to be incorporating this into how I communicate with my clients. I've already had a few Zoom discussions, but um, I mean, there's just a lot here. And I know that you, we could share documents. I'm just really excited. This is, it is something where as long as some of us have been doing this, Jeffrey, just to be real, real with you, for some reason, I'm having a challenge sharing this from the Facebook page that I set this up to go live in originally. So it's hard for me to share out. So I'm sharing like backwards and the back link. So it's something that we're all learning together. I think Steve, if he's still here, will tell you this is something that evolves quickly and we're all learning together. Real quick and real talk about running. I've been an athlete my whole life. And then over the last 20 years with the kids, it was all about them and getting them to practice and, you know, eating that donut on the sideline while they're running up and down the field and kind of let things go for a while. When I got back into running, I had a hard time leaving the house and making it down the street, which to, to where my path starts, which is literally probably 300 yards. I mean, without like being winded and out of breath and it's like, shit, you know, this is ridiculous, right? And excuse my French and, you know, going from there to where I am now, where it's not a matter of, you know, it's just a matter of time. I need to be back and make an appointment or get my butt to court. It took about, you know, a year, it took about a month to get to feel good about running. And then it took about a year to just get to the point where you can run as far as you want at a slow pace, slow pace, right? I'm slow, but it's like, it's just consistently doing the video consistently getting putting your running shoes on and going out there and we all know that we're all smart individuals you know it's like getting through this and developing the right mindset it's not a matter of us not knowing what to do it's a matter of us sometimes keeping our thoughts to ourselves, taking a deep breath let everybody express themselves let everybody kind of do their thing and and learn how to maybe Maybe to answer Harlan's, is Harlan still? Yes, he is. Maybe to answer Harlan's question, maybe this is a great opportunity to work on our people skills. Yeah. Uh, I mean, can, I'm can, just can saying. I, can I just oh, add something? Everybody can jump in, absolutely. Hey, Nicholas, good yeah. to see you. I, you know, I, I, I just want to add one thing here. You know, um, in my great state of New York, uh, we have Governor Cuomo. And every day, Governor Cuomo, every day comes out and talks to everybody. Now, I don't agree with Governor Cuomo about everything, but I will tell you, if you caught snippets of his daily, uh, uh, and this is not a political thing, it's neither, you know, I'm, I'm not knocking anybody, but where I, have to give, where I have to give a thumbs up, I'm going to give a thumbs up, and it goes with what we're talking about. Governor Cuomo sits there and tells you all the facts, all the figures, how many new cases, how many people, whatever, where it's going, very honest, throws it all out there. And then... He spends about 10 or 15 minutes and talks about how it's personally affecting him. And you could see, unless he's being really good, and it's hard to fool me, that he's, he's clearly being genuine. He talks about how it's affecting his relationship with his daughter. He had his daughter sitting next to him uh, when, when he was giving his daily, uh, his daily update. Uh, he talks about his mother who's 90 years old and how he's worried about it. He talks about saying to those people that, you know, talking about saying I love you to, to those people that, you know, that mean something to you. Now, how many governors do that? Really, let's be honest. Uh, and so my point in bringing this up here to the group is that when you're in a position of leadership, as every one of us should be, as Harlan reminded us, especially lawyers who took an oath, we all have a certain responsibility of leadership to the community you know he's you know where you can share part of your soul you don't have to share the whole soul if you don't want to but where you can share part of it and it's genuine people will see that and people like that they don't have to agree with everything that you've done politically they don't have to think i'm the best lawyer as i've said before but sharing a little bit of yourself in a real and authentic way matters. Mm, so important. So important. Amen. I mean, especially, hey, Neil, especially when you're picking a jury. Yes, absolutely. Right? You can incorporate. Yeah, yeah. It's, wow. That's, but it's easier said than done, right? How are you guys, how are you guys getting over that? In other words, as a lawyer, sometimes it's hard to put your professional face aside, okay, and show your human side, right? This is not an easy, it's like running. 
Jeffrey. It's like it's like getting out there, right, and getting back in shape. It's a process. Hey, Steve, are you leaving or saying hi? I even know Steve's I'm wife's saying, Carol, and I've never met. You don't need to just jump in, you guys. You know, it's you. You touched on a really important point, and somehow it's it's difficult to. Um, figure out what a good boundary is with a client yeah because sometimes I don't necessarily want my clients to know what I'm doing in my personal life um, mm -hmm. you know because maybe they, they may they might think that they I should be working on their case instead yep. you know I mean or I just so I'm I'm trying to figure that out like should you be Facebook friends with your clients or should you connect with them a different way um, sure. And but by the same token, I do want my clients to know that I am a human being, and that I have a life, and that I have that I care about my family, you know, and I have, you know, I'm a human being. So I, I, I I'm I'm struggling as to where to draw that. So real quick, Jeffrey, just just so you know, I think each client is different as far as whether or not you engage or connect with them on social media, either before being retained, during the retention, or after the case is done. Everybody's different, right? But I also feel like sometimes we as lawyers put too much pressure on ourselves to please other people. And I think what's super important, one thing I learned, or once I figured this out, just be myself. And if somebody doesn't like it, it's okay. It's, it's really okay. I've got clients, you guys, that are on the other side of the spectrum from me politically. Huge cases right now. But guess what? I'm their favorite lawyer. They know I take care of them. They're my favorite client. It, it, there's, some, there's a dynamic there, Jeffrey, that I can't figure out, but it's all about being real and being, being who you are and people just get that and respect that. And the ones that don't, don't waste your time on them. Focus on the other 99.99% .99 of the people out there that have either never heard of you or, you know, they have something in common with you. Steve's had his hands up. And so, Steve, I want to just jump back over and then, Mo, you're up. I, I understand it's, it's tough um, trying to decide how to be because there's your professional self yes. and your professional company and, and, you, and you want to present that. And so back in the day when I first started teaching uh, companies and clients how to, how to think about this was they could have their, their corporate side and their professional video, and then they could have their casual video, like a live stream and, a, and just a, hey, here I am today, this is what I'm doing. And then on the other side, they could have a very highly produced video. So you could, you could section it off like that. And, and like over here, it's casual. Over on Facebook, it's casual. So, you know, your business videos go on your, your URL to your site. And then if people are interested in seeing your, your casual stuff, oh, come over on Facebook or Instagram, and then you're, you're, you're that way. So Great advice. Can do, you can do both. And then um, the other thing I would say, for people who aren't yet comfortable about producing videos, and they're like, no, I'm not good at it. I, you know, I don't know how I'm going to look on camera. Back in the early days of video, we had really poor connections and the software wasn't good. And you would try and go live and you would say your thing and then you would realize you've lost everything. So you would have to do it again and then you would yeah. lose everything. And then you would have to do it again. And you, you, you realized that after doing it three times, the third time was was the best, it was really good. So what you could do if you want to practice that for yourself is to put a camera on yourself and, and say your thing and record it and then look at it, show it to a significant other, have them look at it, record it again, record it again. And by doing it over and over again, you develop this, this uh, understanding of, of how you are on video. And, and the bottom line is, you don't really want to be some way you really just want to be you on video. So it took, it takes years to figure out that you don't want to try and be like that actor or that anchor person or some certain way. Once you can be figure out that you want to be comfortable with yourself and that's who you are on video that then you get it. No one will ever be better at being you yeah. than you. 
Like, yeah, okay. very good. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's, and it's giving yourself permission to be you. And by the way, I don't know, I mean, what do you guys think? I actually feel like, I don't like the way I look or sound on video, you guys. I don't like the way I come across. Just, I'm being very, very honest with you guys. And so it's something where you have to get over your, you have to get over it. There's like, it's hard to explain, right? It's like, don't care so much. Go ahead, Harmon. I don't know. You guys are the experts. Well, you know that your eye is trained to see the worst. When you look at yourself in the mirror and when you hear yourself, it's not the way you sound. So mm. you are right. You have to get over it. Yeah. Uh, but something that, that, that Steve said is very, very important. Uh, and I'm going to suggest again to make sure you read that document that you signed because it, it's, it really resonates right now. It should always resonate. The backbone of my advertising philosophy over the last 40 some odd years is talk to the public the way you would a jury. Humanize yourself. Be exactly who you are. Those are the two things in my contract when you do business with me. Mm. Uh, and I'm inflexible about that. And, you, and, it, and it shows on the people that I, I, that I work with, you know, the, the, the Mark Garagos, the, the Mark Omaras, the, you know, the Neil Goldsteins. Um, and it's so important because in advertising, as in parenthood, you get what you ask for. And that's the backbone of, of, of Madison Avenue. You get what you ask for in advertising. And so, you know, being, being real, you have to be real. You can't fake being real. You can't fake doing community involvement work. You can't fake, you know, running down the beach, you know, like you do every day and, and giving advice. You have, to, Used to. you have to buy into it because you asked me, what's my why when I thought of this yeah. as you did everyone else? It's, it's reality. It's being real. Um, you know, I follow, uh, you know, Morris on his, on his, on his blogs, because I, I, I just love the, 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 the realness of it. And I think yeah. that's one of the things that may come out of this. I hope it does. You know, you, you really need to push this niche on the, getting people in front of the, the video. Um, it, it, it actually, the best videos to make are on a telephone right now. And the yeah. gentleman, Steve, gave terrific advice. I mean, if you go to Neil's website, you're going to see a fabulous video, you know, by Chris. Um, and then he has videos that, you know, on his personal site that humanizes him. So that's really the combination. And that's really life. You know, if for those of you shooting videos, you know, right now or the next week or two, Mo, I think you're up. If I'm not, you know, just get ready. Um, just a little tip real quick, you guys. Phones are great. One of the cool things about, the GoPro Hero 7 and Hero 8 is they have a software stabilization. So when you guys see me running, I'm just holding this in my hand like this, and I'm just running and talking. There's nothing fancy. It's quick. It's easy. As a lawyer, I'm a lawyer. I'm not a video producer. Uh, this is how we get liquid smooth video, especially if you're standing still. Super easy. So for those of you working from home, use your phones like Harlan suggested. This is also a cool tool that's super easy to use, you guys. And um, but Mo, I like your background. I think, I don't know if you had your hand up. I want to come over to Nicholas Muir also, but yeah. Mo, did you yeah. have your hand up? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was just going to add a couple of things for people maybe watching at home, maybe not so much as for people, you know, that are in the Zoom call here, because most of the people are probably more familiar with it. But, but just as a, a reference, don't be scared of technology. I've never done this virtual background. I heard about it just in chat. And then while we were sitting here, people were talking, I figured it out, downloaded a picture, and boom, there's Wyatt uh, and uh, us last week at one of the last that pro basketball games. Um, but what I would tell people is just, you know, I started this, you know, two and a half, three years ago doing this video stuff and it just started just by me doing it. And I, and I still don't like the way I do it and look and like Mitch, but, but I think the more and more you try it and do, the more comfortable you'll be with it. But I think if you're, if you're working for perfection, then you're never going to get it done. I think you need to have some, some best practices that, that you preach a lot, Mitch, the, the good background, good audio and, and things, but it doesn't have to be perfect. People, people aren't looking for perfect. I look, give me one second, indulge me. Let me read this email that I got from a former client yesterday. Sure. She reached, she reached out to me and asked for some legal help, and I responded promptly. This was her response, and it blew me away because I didn't know she even follows me on social. Thank you, Morris. You're prompt, you're prompt to help me when I need information. Thank you. I hope your family and you are staying well. I really like what you're doing and sharing on LinkedIn as you share with the community. One can never go wrong in helping others. You are what you are very well known for. I am sure you reach out to you, people reach out to you for your wisdom and knowledge. That is truly a gift. I was blown away when I got that. 
But that's, that's, that's right. talking about everything we've been talking about this whole last hour and 15 minutes. It's just sharing your why. And that's just somebody, she actually wasn't even a former client. She, she was the mother of a former client. And um, so, um, you know, she's following me and she's obviously connecting with what I'm doing. But I, I would tell people now, as Harlan's been talking about, things that are bothering you and that are concerning you during this crisis, share it out. Uh, one of the most popular tips from Mo that I've had in a while was on a Saturday, last Saturday morning at the office before it kind of got real crazy, I shared out about talking to your children about this. Because I said earlier, that Wyatt's got questions and he's wondering why life's changing and doing. And when I shared that out, one of the local mom blogs that I'm connected with shared it out with all their followers. That one video that took me three minutes to shoot and share, 1,500 views. And, um, you know, I, and I think that's something that a lot of people are struggling with. But if you're struggling with it, other people are going to be struggling with it. So don't, don't feel free to, you know, I mean, don't, don't hesitate to jump on and talk about it for 60 seconds to three minutes. Or if you're more, more you know, more gusto, do what we're doing here. And Mo, you're sharing you're sharing your why with your uh, with your green screen behind, okay? With your screen share, you know, father, son, basketball fan, sports guy. Those are the things that connect us, I think. And live video really allows us to do. At the same time, Professor Nicholas Meir of Chapman University is showing his family picture. If I remember your Facebook post correctly. In the background, uh, Nicholas is teaching his classes at Chapman University online now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And Nicholas travels all over the world. He's the social media professor, you guys. He's, he's a personal friend of mine, and it's, and it's been a pleasure getting to know him. Um, but that's what you're doing with that background. That's your family, right, Nicholas? That's, that's part of your why. Uh, well, thank you. It's uh, my grandma, Alma. Uh, she's um, on top of the stairs and she was an impressive woman uh, running a, a household um, farm by the polar Arctic Circle in northern Sweden, uh, even though she was a widow at age 30 and uh, six kids and hosting a military company during the war on her lot and still keeping up with the teaching and she became a mom to a lot of kids from this Arctic region that did well in life and uh, she was dedicated to teaching and uh, I tried to, as I'm transitioning my classes uh, fully online for the duration of the semester, um, uh, I tried to keep her in my mind as um, mm. some things would never change, good teaching uh, should just use a different format, a different channel. Um, and uh, certainly I have things to learn in terms of how to deliver it effectively online and I'm experimenting with tools and but just to make sure that I don't lose lose myself in a rabbit hole of a new uh, gadget or app. I, I just want to go back to my why about uh, helping elevate anyone I come across in my classroom or outside uh, to make them do the most. And, teach them something I know uh, whenever I can through the platform I know uh, and hopefully stay connected with them through life so I can learn from them uh, when they graduate. Well, and you do it, and Nicholas, you do it so well. Um, and let me ask you a question. How are your students, your, your university age students at Chapman University, how are they handling this situation right now? What's, what's their mindset? If we're as adults interacting with them, what do we need to pay attention to right now? Well, one is um, empathy. The first class after we transitioned, I spent like uh, 15 minutes um, on uh, the change curve in a grief situation uh, because clearly there's some loss involved, even though um, even if nobody dies, uh, the loss being the college experience. Many of my classes are upperclassmen, the senior years. Uh, they are losing the best time of college the last three months graduation ceremonies threatened of course uh, it's not 100 percent yet but um, uh, the whole uh, bonding experience college experience because they pay they didn't sign up for an online training there are good online training but they didn't sign up for it so they lost something and it's going to take some time uh, they go through anxiety confusion anger depression before they might start seeing some icing on the cake in terms of uh, mm -hmm. this grief cycle when they might see this wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, hopefully, or it might even be some unexpected benefits about how they could stay connected better than they ever thought and uh, actually learn some tools in the process, especially my topic of social media and digital marketing, where I stress from day one that 
It's never going to fully replace face-to-face -face marketing, but we're going to find ways in which we can replicate the richness of face-to-face -face interaction as closely as possible when it's not practical uh, for budget reasons, for time reasons, for climate reasons, and now for corona reasons to travel as much as before, to stay connected in a more meaningful way with more people on a more consistent basis. Uh, and um, trying to stress that uh, in my book, uh, my if they sign up for a class with me, it wasn't the end of the transaction at least not from my part. I see it as sort of a, they, them being in my class means that we have a relationship during that class. And I see that as a start for a career long uh, relationship where I stay connected with students more than a decade after they graduated. Uh, and uh, of course optional, but um, they may lose this couple of months of an experience with me or with other professors, but at least I will try to make the most out of uh, cementing the relationship to some kind of fertile, ground, ground, fertile uh, 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 ground so that it can grow and blossom from there uh, by staying connected even afterwards through various social platforms. You, in, the last, in the last 20 minutes or so, you guys, I don't want to wrap this up in about 20 minutes. Nicholas, you just said a couple of things that are just, your experience with your, with your students is like the experience we're having with our clients. Mm -hmm. And you said something else in the past, when we had a client before social media, before the internet, when we were done, we were done. Well, maybe we'll send a newsletter or a letter. Now we can stay connected 24 seven, seven days a week from this point forward, like you are with your students. That's what we're doing with our clients. Yeah. Um, no, certainly, I, yeah. Wow, I didn't, I haven't really thought no, but about I think, that. Yeah. And Camelia and Brian and Ed, I want you guys to feel free to jump in. I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt yet, uh, Nicholas. No, but I, just uh, one more thing is that, um, that was the first thing, uh, first thing to sort of show that I understand the frustration that I actually see they're ventilating the frustration and perhaps anger online. There's a petition about getting refund from tuition or whatever. I can empathize with things and many of these decisions are beyond my pay grade, but I just say that why I would do whatever I can to deliver as much as value as possible in the context of my course, uh, plus uh, also be available for discussions and being a little bit more accommodating when it comes to like, I just sent out a memo about the team project. If they feel that it's impractical to continue the team project as stipulated being in Bangalore and Montana or uh, Irvine, um, uh, if they feel it adds too much stress, I offered an alternative assignment, but uh, still I'm going to carry through with my class and uh, I encourage them to keep working on the team projects if they feel up for it and use some of the tools available such as this one to actually keep working, not as if nothing happened, but actually some sense of normalcy and regularity. One student wrote to me, it was good to actually have a regular class and just feel that something actually is just like last month or last week and uh, just keep going and uh, having a routine that actually makes sense so that not everything is changing at the same time. Let, let me share something real quick, uh, Nicholas. I think this is an opportunity to use social and Zoom mm -hmm. programs like this to build new relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about the relationship you built that got you in front of, is it Prince Albert? As a, I mean, seriously, yeah. isn't that you guys yeah. connected on, you know, you guys, you connected online with, with his, with, with his well, agency. And then tell us just a little bit about that, because I think there's opportunity for all of us to expand mm -hmm. our relationships over the next couple of months, doing what you did that might end up down the road with a new friend, a new business opportunity. I think that's just yeah. an amazing story. Just share it if you would briefly. Yeah. I'd really like yeah, to the, well, thank you. The, the brief version that I shared in your book uh, as my book chapter contribution, if you haven't checked it out yet, The Ultimate Guide to Social Media. Uh, Don't worry about that. Checks. Tell us your story. But anyway, um, uh, that was actually me, not, not me reaching out, but it was, um, this is an opportunity for people to build mm -hmm. up their online presence, to make themselves available to serendipity in life. Because I strongly believe that uh, playing hard to get is not a winning strategy for 99.9% .9 of the population. Um, some people may play hard to get as a dating strategy and it, it might look mysterious and exciting for some. I don't know. I never tried. But, uh, I think that playing hard to get is not a winning strategy. Instead, 
being available to showcase clearly what you can offer to the world, but also come across as uh, the genuine person that I heard some of you emphasize here. I, I'm sorry, I missed the first hour, but authenticity and what you can do. I mean, showcasing two things, that you're good at something uh, or interested at least, and B, that you're a good person that actually stays connected with people and helps, helps people. Uh, if you do those two things on multiple platforms on a consistent basis, uh, the chances that you're going to get opportunities presented to you that you didn't know existed and be even if you knew they existed you would never have even thought about applying to uh, will present themselves over time this was perhaps once in a blue moon or once in a Halley's comet I don't know but uh, the uh, digital um, minister or director of digital transformation of Monaco found me basically via Google and by me being available, but they also liked what they saw when they checked out videos and my blog, et cetera. And so they invited me to serve on the Monaco Digital Advisory Council. So I've been to Monaco twice and uh, dealing with uh, a boardroom of experts trying to guide a principality of Monaco through a digital transformation to set an example for the world. And um, this was, um, quite remarkable experience, but uh, it's something that I'm trying to see what kind of uh, contributions I can add. And it also involves some imposter syndrome in terms of what can I add in this room when most people around the table had Wikipedia pages written about them. And, uh, I don't yet, but anyway, one day maybe. Um, so I think um, um, on that note, actually, I, I just saw that even he caught the coronavirus now. He's actually... Um, mm. um, um, quarantine now in his castle and hope everything goes well. Well, I remember you, we, we were talking about this opportunity and long story, long story short and looking back, I mean, what, what an amazing way to build on that connection and build on that relationship. And I do think it's something that we can all, we can all do, you know, in our online communities is to mm -hmm. do exactly, take advantage, put yourself out there, connect with people you normally might not connect with, accept their invitation. You accepted a, an opportunity, an invitation. And we talked about yeah, it, no, right? And I mean, you kind of rolled the dice yeah. a little bit. Well, uh, honestly, I almost deleted the email. I thought it was a Nigerian prince scam. First, I saw the headline, like a prince of Monaco invites True you to story. Monte Carlo. And it was like, <laughs> this is not real. But then I read up on it and checked out the content. I initially checked LinkedIn for the person in charge of the digital transformation. It looked like perhaps I need to <laughs> check this out and see if this is real. And it was. And it uh, was. I think that's fantastic. And as a matter of fact... So maybe, uh, maybe everyone should go through the junk email box once in a while to see maybe there could be some real opportunities there. There you are right there. <laughs> so, so here's the prince in the middle. This is Professor Mir over on the left side of my screen. And that's because of your, the work you put in over the years. It's because of the reputation you've built up, but it's also because of your willingness to put yourself out there on the digital platforms. And- um, Well, no, but I think um, I, I don't feel that I am perfecting this at all. I, I am still an academic, uh, even though I am more practically oriented than, uh, than the average uh, research oriented professor. I try, I love to being in touch with executives like yourself and people out there practicing a real profession like many of you guys. And I admire the way that you put out content on a very consistent basis, Mitch, because I think that's, I can certainly do more, practice what I preach. And by the way, yeah, thank yeah. you. I would love to have you back in class uh, after spring break here, even though it might be virtual. Love to. You know, I would, you know, I'm always here for you, and we can also do this, hit mammoth together. I'd love to do some skiing with yes. you. Uh, Jim's got his hands up. And then what I'd like to do, you guys, if you guys don't mind, because Lisa's telling me I'm, I'm at the house. Lisa's telling me it's time to have dinner in a few minutes. Uh, so what time is it here? 4.30, not dinner, but, you know, whatever. Um, Jim, let's do this, and I just want to work myself around. Last comments, maybe feedback, uh, what, and also maybe what did you pull away from today's Zoom that you can take with you over the next couple of weeks or next couple of months, uh, professionally, maybe even personally. But if you have an independent, you know, comment, also please jump in. Right. Well, we all remember where we were when 9/11 happened. I was a major on active duty in the Marines. And so now being retired, you know, 10 plus years ago, 
it's kind of different being on the other side as a, in a sense as a citizen soldier. So I've had to say, how can I help in my community? How can I help people? And it's interesting hearing everybody's story here because we all have really seen how people struggle with video. So it's kind of fortuitous that I started doing this two years ago because now I'm helping people doing things like this, getting on Zooms and thanks Mitch for, for inviting us and, and just using people like you Mitch and Winnie Sun as examples to people in those industries. Like, look guys, you can be getting your message out there. Don't be afraid to, to talk and let people know and that you know we all had to start somewhere and it wasn't necessarily pretty. And uh, you know, so I just think, thank you for allowing us to do this. And so to, so to me, it's about helping people be successful and giving that, uh, that hand up to get everyone to the next level and knowing that we're gonna come out of this on the other side better for it. Love that. Hey Mitch. Um, how did you invite me to this? I got a personal invite. Did you personally uh, write that or is it some kind of program? No, nope, Because personal. I feel that was very personal. Yeah, yeah. I went, that was my, very... I went through my... Sorry, there's no... no that was great. No so let that, me just... That, so it's that, interesting, that, Steve, that you noticed that. that. So I took the time uh, after lunch today, you guys. I just thought about this. I was thinking I need... It's Sunday afternoon. What am I going to do? I can't go out for a run. And so I sat down, I created the note. And, and for those of you that got my Facebook messenger, that was a personal message for me. And I probably went down the list and sent 40 to 50 out and then shared this on the different social platforms. So that was, that was genuine and from the heart. Great. That, that got me to, to join in. And I think that was very you know, a good thing for people to take away from this to, to do that. If you want to do a, a Zoom uh, like this. this, is my third one. And, you know, it's kind of exciting that it's a new technology for me to learn and use. And um, I think that Mitch, and an important thing that we can all see that you've uh, moderated this and got each person to speak. And that's something I do in local meetings here in Boston. And I think this is one of the most valuable. Um, video chats i've been in in a, in a really long time so i think thank you did you. a great job thank you. And we haven't even heard from brian yet and brian i'm not going to let you go without having you jump in in a second steve thank you i appreciate you thank jumping you. in i know you know you've got a lot going on and i hope you know uh always here for you and our community is always here for you and keep keep putting out great content definitely follow steve you guys on facebook he's got some good stuff and get his book get seen Hey, let's, uh, we're working our way and kind of wrapping things up. Jeffrey, I'm going to put you in the hot seat. Final thoughts, takeaways, uh, comments. <coughs> yeah, um, this is a really great time to plant seeds. Mm. Um, yeah, I like that. And I really like what Harlan said about calling your clients, but I'm also going to call my former clients as well. And, um, and so I'm, and to just reconnect with people and I'm going to and I'm also going to make an effort to connect with a lot of um, uh, centers of influence in my local community I'm going to make a real effort to do that through this platform I think that would really I think that would be really good have you have you looked at bomb bomb Jeffrey have you seen me talk about bomb bomb b-o-m-b b-o-m-b I have and one of the things I'm going to do over this over these 90 days is actually learn how to use it it's going to take you an hour or two. Okay. It's super simple. So, so it allows you within your email program, just to, just to record and send a video a message where your recipient doesn't need to click away from it. They can watch it within their email inbox. Here's the power. It allows them to click a link and respond via video, even if they don't have the bomb bomb application, which is brilliant marketing, but it's also fun. So when you do your bomb bombs, to your clients or your prospective clients, invite them, listen, I know I've shared a lot in this video, hit the link and reply to me if you have time, by video too, okay? And you can kind of start the dance. It's like take it, it's like that first dance at a wedding where you gotta stand up and take someone by the hand and get out on that dance floor. And then once you're out there, everyone starts dancing. So I'm glad, Jeffrey, I appreciate the feedback. It means the world to me and uh, it's good to see you today, definitely. Nice to see you too, thank you. Eric, it looks like you're unmuted. What's going on? Well, in which way? 
tell me, tell me, tell me um, what you have planned over the next couple of weeks, maybe premised upon what we've been talking about today, mindset, uh, your why, what's in store for, for you in your offices over the next couple of weeks? Well, on our business clients, we've got a, a major concern. I mean, we represent a, a variety of uh, breweries. We have some other people in jobs, for example. We represent a, a company in which their whole thing is laser tag. Well, they can't do anything during this period. They're in dire straits. So what we're, we're hoping to be able to do is send out to them a video uh, of hopefully the whole team. We'll have to edit that together and see if we can do it to let them know that kind of we're here for them. And one of the things we want to do is we want to give them links to the, the uh, disaster emergency loan applications that are out there. Uh, then tell them, look, there's no harm in going ahead and asking. Uh, now, again, reminding them, reach out to your, your tax and your accounting professionals because they're going to know the financial aspect of this better than we will. But we want to kind of give them the resources. We want to let them know as well that even though we are no longer uh, at least until further notice, doing in-house meetings that they can easily schedule. And we're going to be sending out to them a way to schedule video conferences with us uh, so that we can go through these things. I have a couple of clients, some of whom are, one of whom we were doing an estate planning for. He is 80 years old. And I've got to tell him, that, look, we cannot have you come down. The danger to you is right. just too great. Um, but what we can do is we can work on ways of making sure that we can get items signed by you and going from there. So for example, one of our notaries, who I think is really good, is going to go out to them, is going to have them leave their items on a, uh, on a table outside so that they can look at it. And that neither, they will not be together at the same time, but he can go up, take a look at the person who's coming down, then go see the documents that are laid out, the identifications, notarize it, then leave so that it can be signed, and then come back and grab it and bring it back to me. Um, so those are the kind of things that we're working on. Uh, I think that a lot of people are going to be scared. And for us, it's also scary because obviously our clients who depend upon the bars we represent, for example, the restaurants we represent, if they don't have people there, they're not going to have money. And it's going to be hard uh, for them to make payments. So what part of our issue is going to be, look, you know, we're going to see what we can do to work with you to get through here. Um, you know, now, whether or not our landlord is going to be happy with that, that's a whole other story. But yeah, right. uh, I'll I'll deal with that as it comes across, and I can always move to a smaller office if need be. Eric, um, you, Eric, you said a couple you said a couple things about giving the clients options. You said a, you mentioned a few things that I hadn't thought of, mm -hmm. and I don't think clients are really aware of what their options are. I will tell you guys, I did a video last week. It was one of the most the most engagement I've gotten with private messages and comments after I posted it. It wasn't a live video; it's just a video I shot while I was running but it talked about how lawyers can get extensions and continuances on clients' cases. Things that we take for granted, for example, our court system shut down in Orange County. They're done. Yeah. They're not even, we just got an email today. Clients need to know that as lawyers, we can deal with that and yes. we have options and we can bring motions to stay, stop. We can bring motions to continue. The system set up where a client's case isn't going to be compromised because of the coronavirus other than delay. And I think there's content that we can create letting the client know that we've got it handled and not to worry about that. But it amazed me that clients never thought about the ability for us to stop a case or to extend a case or to change a deadline, something that's simple for us they didn't think about. And so I appreciate that, Eric. That's a great idea regarding the notary because we've been yeah. wondering how to get some things notarized. And, yeah, we're going to uh, let our clients know that, safe. Yeah. that on Wednesday, we're going to do a massive Zoom meeting with uh, as many clients as want to check in. And we want them to know, we don't want any of you to discuss the particulars of your case because no one else should know about the particulars of your case. But we're going to tell you what we're planning on doing as we're going forward. Uh, over the next few weeks, possibly months, as we get ready for this, uh, including how we're going to deal with some attorneys who are going to be difficult. For example, discovery. Discovery, the courts don't usually get involved, but if there's someone who gave us a 30 days to respond to something, let's say that 30 days hits on Monday, and we're not going to make it, being able to tell the client, look, they can do their motion to compel, but it's not going to matter because the court is going to give them the, give us any extensions that we need. It's looking at our cases 
differently as well. Now, there's a very different situation for our, our clients on the criminal defense side, particularly those who are in custody, yeah. versus those of us who are dealing with just straight business contracts and dealing with um, those who are dealing with civil litigation at this particular point. Uh, and we want to try and address their fears with that as much as possible. So I've got no choice. I've got to go to the jails to talk to these people um, and also to get a look at the clients because the minute I start seeing a sign that maybe they're ill, obviously at that point, I've got to, I've got to move on it. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot to think about. A lot to think. About. Yeah. I mean, we had clients so. who were brought in to, to court on Friday that the court never told us they were going to do this ever. The DAs didn't tell us it was going to happen. And in talking to a few DAs, I don't think the DAs knew that we had not been notified that the court was bringing these people in and to do what I have no idea. Uh, so that's a, a huge problem as well. I think that as, as a bar, we kind of have to hold the, the judiciary responsible of, you can't just move clients around because it's convenient for you. You have to let us know. So we're probably going to get into a fight with a couple of judges, but so what? Well, that's, that's, that's what you're good at. And that's why, you know, major respect for what you're doing in the in Inland Empire, Eric, and stay in touch over the next couple of weeks, if you would. Hey, oh, Brian, okay. real quick, Brian, I, you know, I saw you post a couple of things uh, earlier today. I think it was in the Maximum Lawyer Facebook group, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't know if we've ever met before. We, not, but we met, um, yeah, we met, we met very briefly at Max Law last, last year. Last year, uh, last year. Okay, I, uh, okay. I was just with, um, earlier this month, it was with uh, Bob Burke for a seminar. So he actually gave your book a little shout out. So it was great. So Oh, uh, I love Bob. Really? What great. a small world. What a small, Brian, it's, it's good to see you. And uh, you know what? I got to ask you. I mean, this whole thing's about what's your why, what motivates you, and what are you going to be doing moving forward <clears> over the next couple of weeks or a couple of months? Your thoughts? What's your feedback? A couple of things. That? Um I don't know if you guys talked about it earlier. I kind of jumped on the call late, but uh, okay. Dr. Gary Sanchez, uh, dentist out in Arizona, has this thing about finding your why. You know, if you know that Simon Sinek book, like Start With sure. Why. Sure. And, and he's like, I love that book. It's great. And then he actually started working with Simon about it. But it was like, yeah, Simon, we get it. But how do I discover my why? Like, I get that I have to know it, but like, how do I find it? And, <clears throat> and he has, he's kind of got this thing that I think it's like 50 bucks now. Uh, it's like know your why app, but he asks a series of questions that will help you identify your why. Um, that's not a, a sales pitch. I, like which I have no affiliation or anything. No, but, that's uh, cool. I mine mine was a. I found out mine was a better way, and I felt like the end of a movie where you like you you look back on everything and you start seeing all of, like the scenes unravel, and I was like, oh, shh. oh that's, that's how I've been living my life. You know, like I'm always looking to fix this or fix that or move this here. Um, so that's very helpful for me. So. That's my why, you know, and I'm always looking to tweak and make things better in my house and whatever, but I've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> as far as what's going on now, um, so I'm in Illinois. On Friday, we just, uh, we had a, uh, and I do, we, we practice divorce with dignity. That's what we do. Okay. Um, so we had, uh, on Friday, Illinois had a shelter in place law go, go in effect. We're basically kind of, kind of what happened in California, right? Um, we knew it was kind of coming and whatnot, so we did an emergency webinar for our clients that were kind of, oh, what do I do this weekend? You know, I got parenting time, I got this and that. And we had actually been planning a, a three-part uh, Zoom conference, similar to what Eric was just talking about, but we're doing it in three parts to kind of break things up. The first one is just kind of mindset of like, you know, how, you, how should you be handling these things? And, you know, um, I was kind of jotting out some of my notes here, but, you know, some people should not be on social media, you know, some people can read social media and they're fine. Right. But, but in, in many ways I started thinking about it and writing about it. It's, it's like, we know that there are some people that can't have a beer. They just can't like they, it turns into 20 and it turns into, they, 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 they can't do it. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just, well, there is something wrong with them. It's just, we can't see it. Right. Like, Right. It's not like, and, and it's not something Great they point. can control. Good I should point. Say. I agree with you 100%. Right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Same thing with social media. Some people start yeah. going down this rabbit hole. Myself, I can read a post and I'm fine. I go on the next day and right. no big deal. But others can't. We got to recognize that and know who you are and who you're not. And I want to encourage my clients that are having problems with this get off social media. Like, it, it, you're going to hear about the news. You know, find a trusted source and stick with that one only. You know, if something else comes, the zombie apocalypse comes, somebody's going to knock on your door and let you know. 
you know, you're, you're going to be fine. We'll, we'll, in fact, we'll, we'll let you know if there's a zombie apocalypse, we'll, we'll call you. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll make that promise. We'll so, knock on your door. You don't yeah, even need exactly. social. We'll come over and right. knock we'll, on your we'll door. We'll have a code word, right? Um, you know, not, not, a, not a zombie or something's our code word. Um, then we're going to do a, a, a second video a series just all about uh, financials and, hey, child support, am I going to get paid or what, what's going on and this and that. Then we're going to do a, a, another one on parenting time in particular and, and you know, uh, property and all that sort of, or, I'm sorry, property will be with the, the financials and, and stuff like that. But So that's one of the things. And then we're doing a, what we call gas calls. Um, some people were just talking about it, but it's, it's give a shit, right? Um, you know, don't, and be authentic, be true. Um, we're, as lawyers, we're in the people, we're the problem solving business, you know, like that's what we do. And this is nothing but a problem. And, and yes, not everyone, like our former clients are not going through a divorce again or things like that, but maybe they're afraid of, you know, they're having some accounting issues. Maybe I could call some accountants and get them connected. Maybe they're having a problem with some, you know, we have resources, we know people, um, let's be the ones connecting them. Let's help solve their problems. So that way, when something goes wrong, they're like, call them. That, that's, those are your guys. They're, they're going to take care of you. And you do it in an authentic way, not in a, you know, I'm going to get something or you're keeping a scoreboard way. Just what can we do to take something off your plate? You know, how can we help you? So um, that's what we plan to do um, right now. I mean, unfortunately, this, this might be a boom for business. Uh, I, I say unfortunate because, uh, believe it or not, we, we, I try and talk people out of getting divorced. Just I don't want people to go through it, but if they do, we'll help you. Um, but I think marriages that were on the brink already being confined at home, um, it's not going to be good. Might be good for my business though, on the criminal defense end. Right. I mean, there, there's yeah. just an article that someone said domestic violence is up exponentially already in, in, in some states. I mean, it's sad, but true. Yeah, it's interesting. I remember back in 2008, uh, when the financial crisis hit, I think that one, it was one of our busiest years as a law firm. I mean, a lot of mm -hmm. litigation with big companies, right? They couldn't just look the other way when somebody owed them debt. Brian, you are, um, you're natural on this. I mean, just, I mean, I really feel that way. And I, I would love to see you embracing more videos and, and doing more of this because you're, you're, you're real, you're comfortable on video articulate. I, I'm, I wish you had joined us earlier and shared earlier because there's so much I want to talk about. So do me a favor and let's stay in. I mean, I want to continue this conversation because you also have the type of practice where people need solutions, especially in light of what's going on here. And you said something that we didn't talk about. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Okay. I used to, when I was growing up, I ran with those guys. Those were my buddies right? That, that back in the 70s and 80s, we, yeah. we partied hard. And there were some guys that after that first beer, they, you know, wonderful, amazing human beings, but it just wasn't a good combination. It was like lighting a stick of dynamite. The social media is very similar to some people. You know, if you can't compartmentalize, if you can't walk away from it, what, a, what an interesting analogy. And so my takeaway from what you just said is is having is listening to what you just said about that checking ourselves in my words before we wreck ourselves and talking to my kids about it is where i'm going with this okay because they grew up with this glued to their eyes i mean especially my son this is you know he's probably gaming right now and it's all good but thank you for the reminder i appreciate that so i'm glad even though you were a little bit late i'm glad you're here Oh, thanks. I appreciate you having this. this is oh, great. thank you. Um, Harlan, I'm going to have you wrap us up. But before you do, uh, Professor Mir, what do you got planned for the next couple of weeks? Uh, actually, trying to, um, uh, I wrote down here a few things. One is um, uh, doing a little bit of uh, overdue Marie Kondo decluttering, uh, both um, in my home office and mm -hmm. uh, in my digital world, because I have too many apps too many folders, too many unsorted yeah. files. And I recognize it's a rabbit hole I can drown in. So I'm gonna do some broad strokes, like save all the downloads, thousand files into archive or whatever, yeah. do it searchable, but identify the core focus points because it's not novel to say the following because I've seen it uh, too many times on social media the last week, people that raise their hand saying, 
hey, well, guess what? This is a great opportunity to actually do some serious work. Yeah, of course it is. But the question is how? But uh, I, 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 I will puke the next time I see somebody saying, as if it's the first one in the world that says this, because we have heard it now many times. You were one of the first to say this, Mitch, so you didn't sound repetitive when you said it three weeks ago. But uh, now it's like beyond, oh, I have an idea. We can actually do something with this time. Now it's more like, do it instead of talking yeah, about it. Yeah. Uh, it's just point. don't say you're going to be strong. Just go to the gym. Uh, and I think um, my 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 thinking is I'm going to do some deep work stuff that I'm behind with my book, um, video like you mentioned. Get a process in place for actually practicing what I preach in my classes, so I don't feel it's too much of a disconnect. I preach, produce content, valuable content regularly, but. I should do it myself, but actually find a system for it without becoming sales at this time, just to add value, help, help people in need, help my students, help my former students, uh, ask to connect people or uh, just find ways to, to be one of the many voices out there that can actually be somebody that people trust. Mm, I love that, adding value. And uh, I will tell you when this thing hit a couple of weeks ago, I looked at my email inbox, Nicholas, and there were like two or 3,000. I, I usually have inbox zero, mm -hmm. but you know, everything hit really hard with clients. And so for about a day and a half, I had to walk away from my inbox. And I remember just marking and dragging all of those to a new folder that says like way behind 2020 February, right? Mm -hmm. So got those yeah. 3,000 emails just out of my inbox and into a folder. Use, mm -hmm. Everything gets pushed to Gmail for me. And uh, I haven't really had to look at that folder since then. In other words, life goes on. Uh, everything's happening. All the court stuff's being taken care of. But sometimes yeah. we can self-clutter to the point where it just stops us in our tracks and it keeps us from being yeah. productive. So we yeah, need to take the, control the opposite, of social uh, media, right? Uh, identify the five key people in your life, family members, your boss, whatever, or key stakeholders, 30 key people that wow. you don't want to miss. Uh, have an alarm bell go off if I get an email from Mitch Jackson or whatever. Uh, and, right. uh, and then <laughs> sort of focus on people, not uh, old emails. Setting up a system. I like that. That's, that. that's very, very good. Harlan, take us home. Bring us home full circle. Well, I, uh, I have a very, very full uh, calendar this week. I have a lot of meetings, uh, and they're all based on what should we do. Uh, you know, what are we going to do and how are we going to do it? Uh, you know, I focus on uh, a half a dozen, you know, very targeted practices that I work with, and uh, each one of them, uh, we have meetings set up to, to really figure out, okay, how am I going to get them to do videos? How am I going to get them to call their clients? I want to make sure that uh, clients are motivated and they understand the opportunity here. The opportunity is for us to be human. And uh, I, I, I have to tell you, Mitch, thank you for this, for this, uh, for this podcast. It, it was like going to church um, because everybody <laughs> had really good things to say. Yeah, and I, agree. You know, I feel stronger. I feel more, uh, I have a better moral compass uh, from everything I've heard. It's very reassuring. And I think we have to reassure you know, people uh, were considered leaders in the industry. So I'm going to spend this time uh, giving more than I take, which I try to do as you do, you know, on a regular basis. Uh, but I got a full agenda. Uh, I am going to get some uh, some uh, videos out. Uh, and uh, I really, I really like what uh, uh, Nicholas said. I'm going to go through and kind of clean up, uh, you know, my, uh, my internet mess or my, I guess my, my outlook mess. Which it's that that's part of the animal that we're all dealing with. I'll tell you right now, and I've known Nicholas for what four, five, six years, maybe longer, maybe actually probably more like eight years. That book that you were working on seven or eight years ago or six years ago, it's different than the book you're going to come out with later this year or next year because things change so fast. And so by embracing that change and 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 putting our arms around it, and I agree with you, Harlan, and everyone else. I feel a lot better right now mentally than I did two and a half hours ago. And I'm a pretty optimistic guy. I was, I'm feeling pretty good. It's been a good day, but it's nice to see everyone, you know, uh, willing to move forward and trying to get better and trying to do the right things. And Jim, your, your military service and, and, and what you talked about and how you're approaching what's happening today from a, through a different lens, 
yeah, I needed to hear that, right? It's like, for me, it's a little bit more of backing off my views on things and maybe just kind of listening and trying to reach out and help. And so you guys, this, this helps me as much as it may have helped anybody else. So thank you for that. And, um, but well, Harlan, it's all about taking action, right? It's all about taking action. You said it very well. We're all in this boat together. We're all in this boat together. Yeah. We are. We, we really, really are. And, and we just got to take a deep breath and say, okay, so let's all row it. Yeah. No, thank you, Harlan. I think um, uh, when it comes to decluttering, I, I, I um, read about one tip from an author called James Altucher that I follow because he's got a great sense of humor and some brilliant insights. But one thing he does occasionally is dive into his old emails, a five-year-old one, where people say, can we have coffee sometime? And reply to it as if nothing happened. Yes, tomorrow works. How about that? And no, <laughs> like apology, whatever. Just dive back in and say, and stop with this. Like, I love that. I apologize yeah. for the time it took me to get back. Just get to business and say, okay, coffee tomorrow. Does it work five years later? <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, listen, speaking of, speaking of can we have coffee again, I would, I would love to do this again next week or the week thereafter, you guys. So if you guys want to do this again, just, just message me, let me know. And, and it's pretty easy to get everybody involved. And it would be my pleasure. I'm around for the next couple of weeks or a couple of months, the way things are looking. So thank you, you guys. I really appreciate it. This will be recorded and uh, let's all we're all one big community, right? Let's just keep moving forward and having each other's back. So thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Be safe, everyone.